This video is a review of the topics that I've covered this week. We've got adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing whole numbers and decimals. I'm just going to look at adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing decimals in this video because if you can work with decimals, you should not have a problem working with whole numbers. So let's start with adding. So the example 6.829 plus 3.58. The first step, we're going to line up the numbers. So we're going to line up ones with ones, tenths with tenths, hundredths with hundredths, and thousandths with thousandths. So 3.58, it's got nothing in this column. I can either write a zero or leave it blank. It doesn't actually matter. So I'll just leave it blank. So we've lined up the numbers and then we're going to start adding from the smallest column. So we've got nine plus nothing and that's nine. Then the tenths, I've got two plus eight. Two plus eight is ten. I can't put ten in a column. So I put the zero in the column and carry one over into the next column, which is temps. I've got eight plus five plus one now. Eight plus five is 13. 13 plus one is 14. I'm gonna put the four in the temps and carry one over into the ones. The decimal point's gonna stay where it is. And then in the ones, I've got six plus three plus one. Six plus three is nine. Nine plus one is 10. So zero goes into the ones, one goes over into the tens, and that becomes 10. So the answer is 10.409. Okay, a question for you to try. So you can pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so let's line up our numbers. Tens with tens, ones with ones, and temps with temps. So 49.39. So we're adding up 17.3 and 49.39. 17.3 has got nothing in the hundredths column. So I can put a zero or leave it. It doesn't matter which one. So start with the smallest column. Zero plus nine is nine. 3 plus 3 in the temps, which is 6. Decimal point stays where it is. 7 plus 9 in the 1s, which is 16. So 6 goes in the 1s, 1 goes over to the 10s. And in the 10s, I've got 1 plus 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1, 6. So we've got an answer of 66.69. Okay, subtracting. So like adding, the first step is to line up the numbers. So the tens go with the tens, the ones go with the ones, the temps go with the temps, and the hundredths with the hundredths. So I've got 57.4 on top. I'm taking 19.36 away from it. So that goes underneath, lining up the numbers. 57.4 has got nothing in the hundredths. I'm going to add a zero. And again, we're going to start with the smallest column. I've got zero take away six. I don't want to do zero take away six. That would be negative. So what I do is I take one off the next column, which is the temps. I've got four there. I'll take one off. That will go down to three. And that one will be worth 10 in the hundredths. So now I've got 10 take away 6, which is 4. In the temps, I've got 3 take away 3, which is nothing. In the ones, I've got 7 take away 9. Again, I don't want to do that. So I'll take one of the tens off. And that's worth 10 in the ones. So 17 take away 9. That's eight. 
and the tens four take away one is three. So the answer is 38.04. And again, a question for you to try. So you can pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so 82.21. Take away 36.6. So lining up my numbers, tens with tens, ones with ones. So they're all in columns. 36.6 has got nothing in the hundredths. I could either put a zero there or leave it. So we start with the smallest column, the hundredths. One take away zero is one. The tenths, I've got two take away six. I don't want to do that, so I'll steal one from the ones, and that'll be worth 10 in the tenths. 12 take away 6 is 6. In the ones, I've got one take away 6. I don't want to do that, so I'll steal one of the tens. That's worth 10 in the ones. So 11 take away 6, that's 5, and the tens. 7 take away 3, that's 4. So the answer is 45.61. Moving on to multiplying. So when we multiply decimals, the first step is to get rid of the decimals. So we're going to change the question into 900. So we've got 9.47 times 0 0.81, we're going to change it into 947 times 81. So we've taken the decimals out and we will put them back in at the end. So we've multiplied by 10 twice to get 9.47 to 947. We've multiplied by 10 another two times to get 0 0.81 to 81. So in total, We've multiplied by 10 four times, or we could say there's four numbers after the decimal place that we've got to put back in at the end. So let's do 947 times 81. I'm going to use long multiplication. So 947 times 81. So we split this multiplication up. We do one times 947, and then 80 times 947. So we'll start with 1. 1 times 947. We start with the smallest side, so 1, 7 is 7. 1, 4 is 4 in the tens, and in the hundreds, 1, 9 is 9. Now we're going to multiply by 80, not 8. So I'm going to add a zero. When I multiply by 80, everything is 10 times bigger than when I multiply by 8. So we'll start with 8 times 7, which is 56. So the 6 goes in the tens, and the 5 carries over into the hundreds. Now I've got 8 times 4. 8 times 4 is 32, plus the 5 makes 37. So I'll put 7 in the hundreds and carry 3 over into the thousands. And now I've got 8 times 9. 8 times 9 is 72 plus the 3 makes 75. So 5 in the thousands, carry the 7 over. There's going to be nothing to add it on to, so it's just going to be a 7, a 70,000. So we've got 1 times 947, we've got 80 times 947, now we add them up. So in the 1s, 7 plus 0 is 7. In the 10s, 4 plus 6 is 10. So 0 in the 10s, 1 over to the 100s. In the 100s, I've got 9 plus 7 plus 1, so 17. So 7 in the hundreds, 1 carries over to the thousands. So I've got 5 plus 1, which is 6. 
and I've got 7 plus nothing in the 10,000s, so it's going to be 7. So I've got an answer of 76,707, but remember I need to put my decimal places back in. I need to divide by 10, so remember I times by 10, 2 times and another 2 times, so I times by 10 a total of 4 times, so I need to divide by 10 4 times, or I can say there's 4 numbers after the decimal point in the question, so there's going to be 4 numbers after the decimal point in the answer. Here's a question for you to try, so 3.25 times 4.6, give it a go and carry on when you're ready. Okay, so let's change the question to 325 times 46. So we've times by 10 three times in total to get this. So we'll divide by 10 three times at the end to get the correct answer. So 325 times 46. We're going to leave 6 times 325, and then 40 times 325, and add them up. So 6 times 5 to start. 6 times 5 is 30. So we'll put a 0 in the 1s, and carry 3 over to the 10s. 6 times 2 is 12, plus the 3, 15. So 5 in the 10s, carry 1 over to the hundreds and six threes are 18 plus the one makes 19 so the nine goes in the hundreds one carries over there's nothing for it to add on to so it just becomes a one one thousand now 40 times 325 so we're multiplying by 40 not four so we'll add a zero four fives are 20 so 0 in the 10s, carry 2 over. 4 twos are 8, plus the 2 makes 10. So 0 and carry 1 over. And 4 threes are 12, plus the 1 makes 13. So 3 in the 1000s, carry 1 over, which goes into the 10,000s. So let's add these up. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 0 is 5, 9 plus 0 is 9, 1 plus 3 is 4, and 1 plus nothing is 1. So we've got 14,950, but we need to put the decimal places back in. We times by 10 three times to change the question, so we'll divide by 10 three times. There were three numbers after the decimal places in the question, so three numbers after the decimal place in the answer. So 14.950, but I can just write that as 14.95. And finally, dividing. So here we've got dividing decimals. 645.7 divided by 0 0.11. So I'm going to rewrite it as a fraction. So a division can always be rewritten as a fraction. And I've got 645.7 over 0 0.11. So to get rid of the decimals, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 10 which gives me 6,457 on top and 1.1 on the bottom. But then I'm going to multiply by top and bottom by 10 again to get rid of the decimal on the bottom. So 64,570 divided by 11. And that's the question I'm going to do. So I'm going to do 64,570 divided by 11. So I'm going to use my short division 
So 11 on the outside. 64,570 on the inside. And I'm going to write down my 11 times table, which might be helpful. Okay, all the way up to 10. So let's start by saying how many 11s go into 6? We start with the biggest side of division. So how many 11s go into 6? Well, none. And that means I've got 6 left over. So that's going to go down into my thousands column. How many 11s go into 64 now? Well, 5 11s make 55. So 5 11s make 55. And how many have I got left over? 55 to 64 will be 9. So I've got 9 to carry over. How many 11s go into 95? Well, 8 make 88. And how many left? That's 7. How many 11s go into 77? That's 7 exactly. So 7. And then how many 11s go into 0? Well, 0. So that will finish up. So we've got an answer of 5,870. Now, this is the answer to 64,570 divided by 11, but that is the same answer as 645.7 divided by 0 0.11. They're equivalent. They're the same thing. So that is the final answer. Okay, a question for you to try. So have a go at it and then press play when you're ready. Okay, so let's rewrite it as a fraction. And we're going to multiply top and bottom by 10 to get rid of the decimal. So we've got 26,190 divided by 9. So 9 on the outside. 26,190 on the inside. And I'll quickly write down the 9 times table, which will be useful for this question. Okay, all the way up to 10. So how many 9s go into 2? That's 0. And the 2 carries over. There's 2 left to carry over into the thousands. How many 9s go into 26? That's going to be 2, which make 18. And there'll be 8 left over to go into the hundreds. How many 9s make 81? How many 9s go into 81? Well, 9, 9 times 9 is 81. So 9, nothing to carry over. How many 9s go into 9? 1. And how many 9s go into 0 in the 1s? Or zero. So we've got 2,910 and that is the answer to the question. Okay, that was the week two review. So adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing whole numbers and decimals. There's an assessment now available and the link will be on the Maths Genie website or in the description.